on the latest uh, between the concerns raised by the Infosys founders and the response coming in from the Infosys board. Now, the Supreme Court's decision to ban the sale of liquor within 500 meters of national and state highways has left India's hospitality industry in a bad mood. The industry claims that a rough calculation suggests losses of over 1 lakh crore rupees, but they also indicate that they will honor the Apex Court's order. In fact, what's interesting is that they're saying that they're not going to challenge the Supreme Court's order, but they are going to seek state government as well as the central government's help. Guess what? Not all bar owners are complaining just yet. Our team of reporters across Mumbai, Chennai and Hyderabad as well as Bengaluru get on the ground to get you a bird's eye view of the impact that the liquor ban has had on states. Almost 12,000 hotels and restaurants all across Maharashtra, including the ones on the stretch behind me, have not been able to serve liquor starting April 1st. And this Supreme Court order has not gone down well with the industry. Just to give you a break up, about 1,000 of these hotels are in the 3 to 5 star category. About 300 to 400 of the hotels and restaurants are in Mumbai alone. So therefore, the kind of losses that the industry has been facing are plenty. Just to give you an estimate, about 50,000 rupees is the kind of per outlet per day loss that hotels and restaurants have have been uh, incurring as a result of this. In fact, we did manage to speak to the Indian Hotels and Restaurants Association on the way forward and listen into what they had to say. We will talk to the government also, we will talk to the corporation also, municipal corporation also, because both have, both are, you know, both need to be taken into confidence for denotification, that is the option that, that we have. Well, there's hardly been any impact of the Supreme Court's order here in Karnataka for the simple fact that uh, the existing excise and licenses or till the 30th of June and Karnataka's excise year uh, is uh, between July and uh, June. However, what we understand from uh, excise department sources is that the state government is working towards identifying those uh, liquor outlets and bars along the highway within the 220 meters as prescribed by the Supreme Court and this could uh, take a while given the fact that this uh, is uh, altered uh, from the earlier 500 meters in fact, uh, Nitya Balakrishnan, my colleague, is standing by from uh, Hyderabad uh, to give us an update of what is happening in Telangana. I'm standing outside one of the 1,000 odd shops that sell liquor across the highways here in Telangana and clearly the Supreme Court directive having no impact whatsoever just yet because licenses in the state are set to expire only post the 30th of September. In fact, what we're given to understand from sources in the state government is they are looking to abide by the Supreme Court directive but clearly do not want any impact whatsoever on revenue from liquor sales. They are targeting a 7,000 crore rupees increase in this fiscal year. So it is likely that procurement of alcohol licenses for this fiscal is going to get a tad more expensive as will drinking imported liquor here in the state. As of now, very clearly there is no impact of the ban along the highways in Telangana and there's going to be no likely impact till the 1st of October. The Supreme Court imposed highway liquor ban could have a unique impact on Tamil Nadu and that's largely because just one road and that's National Highway 32 doubles up as both Chennai's arterial expressway and the highway that connects Tamil Nadu with smaller cities like Madurai and Trichy. After the ban, over 300 hotels, 3,000 state government-run liquor stores and even some of Chennai's more popular clubs like the Madras Gymkhana and the Cosmopolitan Club have already gone dry. Initial estimates say that hotels in Tamil Nadu alone could account for a 50% drop in sales. Bureau report, CNBC TV 18. That is one